This is the S.J. Childs Show, hosted by S.J. Childs, streaming on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Find us on all social medias. The S.J. Childs Show, bringing value to families through education and resources. Check us out weekly, where we'll have new and exciting guests. Thanks so much for your support. Enjoy the show. This episode is brought to you by S.J. Childs Books for Children. Visit sjchilds.org today to check out their special needs book collection. Teach inclusion and your diversity in this special seven book collection. Get yours today. Hi, welcome to the S.J. Childs Show. I'm your host, S.J. Childs, and we have a special guest. DJ just decided to join us here. And also, really, really special guest, Temple Grandin. Thank you so, so much for meeting with me on such a quick notice this morning. And here's your first chance to meet DJ since he's popped in. (laughs) Well, it's um, really great to be here. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, DJ, you want to say hello? Give Temple a wave hello? Hello. Hi. <laughs> you want to go help dad now? Why don't you go get your computer and help dad? Oh, you're so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for being here today. And I'm excited to jump into our conversation. You know, just previously, we were just talking about um, the adults that we see on the autism spectrum out in the world, successful people that the world hasn't quite or they haven't even really uncovered themselves, right? Isn't, isn't that so interesting? Well, I, I had, um, you know, severe speech delay. So I was one of these kids that done, obviously, was something drastically was wrong with me. Now, I understand with your daughter that it got diagnosed a little later on, yeah. age nine, because she was getting bullied and teased at school. And fortunately for me, I didn't get bullied and teased in elementary school because my excellent third grade teacher explained to the other kids that I had a disability that wasn't visible like crutches or a wheelchair and that they need to be helping me. And I've since found out that's called peer mediated intervention. Mm. And I've got a paper online. You might want to look at it. It's called how horses help the teenager with autism, make friends and learn how to work. I love that. And I can't emphasize enough friends through shared interests. Like, okay, what kind of things does your daughter like to do? dinosaurs um she really likes she has some good friends that she that she interacts with and now we do online school so not so much you know she's not struggling with that i think with the thing that we recognized with her kind of being overlooked was that she um had dyslexia early on and the teachers were um said oh she's so kind she's so sweet she's smart that's just i we don't see how that could be possible and <laughs> yeah, as you well, well I was, know, when I was eight, I didn't know how to read. <laughs> yeah. And I was one of the kids that learned with phonics. And my mother just taught me, first of all, get a book the kid's going to actually want to read. That's the yes. first step. And mother would read out loud a page, and then she'd have me sound out a few words. And I look at some of this complicated stuff they've got online for phonics, and I'm going, this is gobbledygook. Yeah. Um, all mother did was pin the alphabet on the wall and have me learn the sounds. Now, I already knew my alphabet song. That's already got most of your long sounds already in it. And it wasn't that hard. But I want to warn you, some kids are whole word learner. Mm. They're going to learn better with whole word and not the phonics. Yeah, definitely. What kind, of, what kind of kid they are. And that's what kind of DJ. We, DJ was diagnosed at 16 months old, so very early. And he um, was reading at one-year-old. So when he was 12 months old and already reading things on the screen and interacting I, you know, was so excited, but then when 16 months rolled around and his pediatrician said, well, he should be doing these other things. Like, yes, reading is great, but that's not what we're looking at for developmental skills. And well, so- <laughs> I, I think they, I think I'd still, you still let him do reading, but we have to work on other things. Yeah. Like and using utensils. Exactly. Uh, I'm, so, I'm seeing a lot of kids, they get a label and it's actually kind of holding them back in some ways. Yeah. That's why I did this book with Deborah Moore on navigating autism. And one of them, and Deborah Moore came up with this uh, saying, label locking. Where yes. people get so locked into the label, they don't see the whole kit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we've got to get these kids out doing things. There's a tendency to overprotect them. Now, no surprises. <laughs> yeah. But uh, give some choices. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was your daughter's age, I was uh, going in stores and buying things on my own. 
Yeah. And uh, you know, I, in, if it wasn't the day and age that it was, I think that she would be mature enough to do that as well. I think that, um, the things that we see kind of, um, brought up the idea of autism for us was in social behaviors, was in not knowing how to navigate or a lot of masking and coming home and kind of being just, oh, kind of letting it out and just being, you know, so tired because she'd been out there masking with these other children and trying to kind of fit in, if you will, but feeling different. Well, one of the problems I have with some of the chit chat social conversation, it goes too fast for me to process. Yes. That's one of the problems, but I want to really emphasize friends through shared interests. I love that. Because I got bullied in high school and horses and model rockets and electronics were activities where I had friends through shared interests. Yeah. And and uh, we need to be working on those sort of things. Yeah. And bullies did not participate in those activities. It's kind of like the saying goes, like-minded, right? Stick to that's your right. like lo- great minds, think alike, like think with your like-minded well, that's right. tribe. But the big problem I'm seeing right now uh, with fully verbal teens is not learning life skills. Shopping, yeah. saving money, mm-hmm. uh, driving. All of these things, if I hadn't learned to drive, I would not have been successful in the livestock industry. Yeah. Uh, they, your job you know, opportunities are really restricted if you don't drive. What are some... Um, now I'm a professor of animal science at Colorado State University. Oh my gosh, congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I was a lot younger, nobody thought I was going to be able to do something like that. I think that's amazing. And the same thing, isn't that, what do you think about that when you hear of some of these psychologists giving, you know, parents the diagnosis of your child will never, 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 they'll never do this, they'll never do that. Isn't that just devastating for those well, parents? Well, on this, you got to, um, you see, what I've learned about different kinds of thinking, I'm a visual thinker. So everything I think about is a picture. Mm. You see, nothing's abstract. Also a bottom-up thinker. I use specific examples to form concepts. Then you have the mathematical lines. Yeah. They run Silicon Valley. A lot of them are autistic. But your verbal thinkers, okay, people that tend to be more verbal thinkers, they're very top down. And they'll make big generalizations about autism or about an inclusive classroom or some other thing like that and make big generalizations, but with no specific information on how do we actually implement that. Yeah. I mean, being a visual thinker, you know, I'm all, you know, parents ask me questions. So what do I do on autistic kids? I got to know, is it a two-year-old that needs to go into early intervention? I'm going to give you a very different answer than maybe your daughter who's being bullied in school, mm. you know, an adult, you know, yes. uh, the, uh, can they talk? What, what are they capable of doing? Yeah, definitely. I'm a big believer in developing strengths. Take the thing the kid's good at and develop it. And in my book, The Autistic Brain, I discuss the different kinds of thinking and there's scientific research that visual thinking exists, mathematical thinking exists and verbal thinking exists. And when I was young, I, I did not know that other people thought in words. Yeah. I thought everybody thought in pictures. Isn't that interesting? I just didn't know. Yeah. And that was a shock to me in my thirties, late thirties to find out that other people think in words. Yeah. And a word thinker tends to overgeneralize. Interesting. And the picture thinker and the math thinkers, we give you too many details. <laughs> but you have to have some details because how can I answer mom's question if she says, how do I teach my kid? Well, I don't know. Is he a teenager? Yeah. Is he a three-year-old? Can they talk? I mean, I've got to know more about them before I can even answer the question. Absolutely. Yeah, the parameters really need to be defined. And, um, you know, in our household, we have found, I think when we... when we realized my husband was on the spectrum and we were able to look back at his childhood and realize, okay, wait, this was done wrong, or wrong. You know, this wasn't looked at correctly. This could have gone better. If we, this, we could have. Now you said that he's on the spectrum and he does a, he's an independent contractor. Yes. Yes. What kind of contracting does he do? Uh, construction, home construction. Homes. Mm-hmm. Building entire homes. 
Oh, yes. And everything <laughs> from, from, I think he says from, you know, uh, demo to doorknobs is what he says about okay, that. Okay. Well, that's, that's good. A lot of people on the spectrum that have been very successful, like say Elon Musk, for example, when I first read Ashley Vance's book about Elon Musk, I thought he was autistic. I put these post-it notes in here <laughs> where I thought he was autistic and now he's disclosed publicly. So I can say it. I'm, but that he has his own business. I have my, my livestock handling stuff was all my own business. And, and a lot of people that are on the spectrum of successful have their own businesses. Yeah. But there are also some, uh, one that works in, in sales for a big bank. Yeah. And sells specialized banking products or somebody else is in an office supply store and they're, they like him because he, he knows every, product in the storeroom number and yeah. the name of the product and what it does. Isn't that the truth? No, there's so many skill sets. And I love that you let say to focus on the strengths. I say that to my parents that I, you know, coach and look after too, is focus on their strengths. Um, you know, when they, when they come up with, with struggles, what can you do in their strength set to help with the struggle. Um, and we try to do that in our home a lot too. We really kind of let our kids take the wheel and show us the way that works for them. Just like you said, with learning your child's thinking pattern, learning how, what their learning style is, that's kind of the key to helping them. Well, the other thing uh, I, I get very concerned about is, you know, kids just not learning basic skills, mm -hmm. shopping, things like this, things that I was doing when I was seven and eight years old, really, really big problem. The other big problem right now is video game addictions. Yeah, that's and true. we've got to control it. They are not having good outcomes. They're yeah. not becoming video game designers or programmers. Right. <laughs> and we've got to control that. Now, I know yeah. that some of these kids get social interactions with some of these games where they can talk. So you don't want to totally ban that, but it needs to be limited mm -hmm. because um, the outcomes are not good. Mm -hmm. They're ending up on a disability check when maybe they ought to have their own business or go on and get a job and have a life. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think kind of accommodations, maybe as an adult with autism going into the workplace is, do you think that you should go in and say, I have autism? This is, these are the kind of accommodations that I'd like to have. I think it depends upon the, the situation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I'm working independently, I would go into a meat plant, design a facility, start it up, get out of there, and, and avoid a lot of the office politics. Yeah, you know, I never disclosed. Um, but I did, when I look back on project meetings, I would disclose certain needs I had, like I like homework. I need to know exactly what the boundaries of this job is, my re design responsibility stops at this point on the rail. I want to need to know uh, what land I can use that's on the site. Very specific, you know, parameters of the job. Also, any task that involves a sequence, I need to make myself a checklist mm -hmm. of the steps to do something. I remember in the 70s, I was working Farm Magazine. We got the one well, of this thing called a photo comp set machine. It was like a very, very crude early word processor the size of a desk <laughs> and and i i was learning how to operate that and i had to make myself a checklist because i do not remember verbal sequence mm -hmm. i have to have a checklist uh there are some individuals where certain lights will flicker and that will drive them just crazy and that has to be fixed then you get their desk over by the window might uh, fix that uh some people might need you know some breaks, sensory breaks. Um, the other thing is, I talked to a lot of granddads that were brought up in the 50s, like NASA space scientists and other ones where they got, they found out they were autistic when the grandkids got diagnosed. But that grandfather had a paper route. They learned skills and they learned skills that I see too many moms are too overprotective and the kids aren't shopping. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. this is no excuse for that. And your daughter, the next time you buy gas, what I recommend that you do is hand her $5 while you're pumping the gas and send her into the shop to buy a, a jug of milk or some other thing that in the shop. Yeah. And, and you're right there. You can see in there. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing a lot of moms that can't let go 
yeah. on just the most basic stuff like this. Yeah, definitely. I think that's wonderful advice. And I hope that our viewers and listeners definitely take some notes and are gaining some. some well, I had a 12 year old girl walk up to me at one of the airports. We were sitting in the gate waiting for a flight. And and I, I was talking to her and her mom. And I found out she'd never shopped. So I pulled five dollars out of my wallet and I said, see that store across the hall? Go in there and buy something. And we could see the store. It was yeah. across the hall. And she bought a drink and came back and gave me the change. Yeah. And she, you know, basic things that I was doing when I was seven and eight, learning how to save money. Mm. The very young child, I got 50 cents a week for a while. Oh, now it's going to be about $5 at the dollar store. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in my generation, it was the five and dime store. <laughs> yeah, right. The, and gum for a nickel. But I knew exactly what I could buy with that 50 cents. I could get five comics. 10 candy bars, but if I wanted a little airplane with a wind up propeller that was 69 cents, I had to save for two weeks. Yeah. I was learning that as an eight and a nine year old kid. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Yeah, I think that that has been lost in society through generations. And, so, and I think it's something that autistic kids need this even more than the regular kids need it. Yeah. Regular kids are going to muddle through it. Yeah. Right, right. No, I completely agree with that. I love that. And that's great encouragement for some parents, and some younger kids. And that's Definitely. easy stuff to do. The other thing is, every dinner, we had to sit at the dining room table, and there was no TV in the dining room. Toys were not allowed at the table. And then you learn how to talk, you know, in the family. When yeah. the parents had a party, um, kids had to put on their good clothes and greet the guests and serve the snacks. And I'm thinking about the important social skills that those things taught. And they're not hard things to do. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I think those are easy kind of step by step day in and day out things to be able to teach a child along the way. Well, and, I got another book. Yeah. This is my how to book the way I see it. Oh, I love I that. A little short chapters on on just how to work with these kids. But yeah. how to chapters, no theory just how do we actually do it? How do we actually do it? No, I love that. And thank you so much for sharing this wise um, conversation with me. I just feel so blessed <clears throat> to have you here with me today, excuse me. And I really am excited to catch up with you in the future, you know, keep watching to see other books you're going, what other projects are you working on? Anything new? Well, working on a book right now on visual thinking, because I'm an extreme wow. visual thinker. And us visual thinkers have a really hard time with the school system. Absolutely couldn't do algebra. I mm -hmm. could do my old fashioned up through sixth grade math. Now, the kind of work that we're good at in engineering is what's called industrial design. It's the visual side of engineering. Like take something like your iPhone. Steve Jobs was an artist. He was not a programmer. And he made the interface for that phone. And his mathematically inclined computer scientists had to make the innards of that phone work and make the program work. Yeah. You see, that's a different minds working together. And we need okay. we need visual thinkers very good with clever mechanical things. I worked with people that were definitely autistic that owned metal working shops, had 20 patents. They worked on building some of the equipment that I designed. I, if you want to see a piece of equipment that I developed, you can look up Beef Plant Video Tour with Temple Grandin. Love it. The HBO <laughs> movie shows projects that I actually did. Yeah. And this brings up another thing. I'm seeing too many kids make anything out of Legos and nobody thought to introduce tools. Right. I just talked to somebody this morning where a kid made working gigantic locks, locks and keys out of Legos. Wow. Wow. Well, and, and nobody thinks to give them tools. I was using tools yeah. in second grade, hammer, screwdriver and pliers. Yeah. Well, one thing my husband said, you know, kind of a dream of his would be to take autistic adults, teach them how to do construction and help them build, you know, their own like tiny homes or their own kind of, you know, get just get together. And well, I work with lots of people in construction, <laughs> yeah. autistic, dyslexic or ADHD. And I think one of the worst things the schools have done is taking out welding, uh, woodworking, mm -hmm. auto shop. But then with the younger kids, I had art, musical instruments, sewing, uh, theater, yeah. uh, a wood shop. And taking those classes out, I think it's totally terrible yeah. because they also expose kids to things that can turn into careers. Exactly. 
Exactly. No, I, I think that's amazing. Is there, a, of course, I have your website up there and everything, but is there a, a special website or anything where you'd well, like they, to send uh, Temple, Yeah, templegrandon.com. That's my autism website. And grandon.com, my last name, that's my livestock uh, website. Okay. And we need to be, um, uh, as I go back and forth between the autism world and the world of industry, yeah um we're actually losing skills the people i worked with they're all they're all retiring mm -hmm. and uh, nobody's taking their place because the kids that should be taking their place are playing video games in the basement <sighs> uh, instead of um getting out there and doing things yeah so they, let's get these kids doing things. so i've got two more books exactly. are, yeah please book promoter. i got i love it more scientists this is all stuff that i did in the 50s out you know doing science projects outside yes um, calling all lines that was all my little aviation projects i would spend hours tinkering with a little bird kite to get it to work nice and and kids are you know hands-on things i think make kids more accepting of mistakes yeah because i, I had to tinker and tinker and tinker to get the kite to work yeah and, I loved and some might say well you're just really old-fashioned but what's going on now is not good and the kids that had no speech delay in my generation um, they got employed. Yeah. You know, where you had problems was relationships. Mm. And for a lot of adults diagnosed later in life, the diagnosis is a relief because it answers some of their relationship issues. But on the employment front, um, you've actually gotten worse. Yeah. I mean, I went back through all the projects I worked on and I wrote down, okay, this metal working shop and this metal working shop. And I've got to be vague about it because um, they're not disclosed. Yeah. So I can't go into detail about what they did and when we did it but yeah um i worked with all kinds of people that were up on, on the spectrum that had successful businesses and multiple patents yeah definitely see this okay. is what makes me get really upset so i go back and forth between the worlds and i'm seeing the algebra requirement blocking a lot of the visual thinking students yeah and, it and was, it's silly isn't it i got out of it and it was pure luck i got out of it <laughs> we were lucky. I got into college in the pro on probation, still hadn't passed algebra, and thank goodness the two semester college math course wasn't algebra in 67. It was matrices, probability, and statistics. And then Ooh. to get my advanced degrees, I had to take statistics, let me tell you. Tutor, 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 and more tutoring. There you go. And I got through it with a C as in Charlie. That's great. You got but through I it. Got, I got lots of um uh other good grades to counteract that yeah that's wonderful what do you think about you know in pushing our kids to go to college too i mean i think that that's probably something that like you said these protective moms they would all you know i don't know that's kind of a lot of for a pressure for my kid to handle things like that i mean what do you think about pushing the kids you know to, to just well, do I, their want the, I don't i can tell you where i don't want the kid playing video games in the basement addicted to drugs yes or, getting in trouble with the law 100 that's stuff i don't want yes what i'd like to have them do is to get out and use their abilities i'm yeah. a big believer in developing strengths visual thinkers like me it's going to be art graphic design industrial design and mechanics things mm. like car mechanics love that that's what my kind of mind is good at math thinkers computer programming chemistry physics and then the word thinkers these are the guys that love lists and statistics about things like sports or movies. Yes. And take that area, that area of strength, build on it. And we need to be teaching life skills and working skills, so starting with very young children, with things like helping clear the table. Yeah. Right. And Easy the shopping things. stuff. I mean, I wish I didn't I love know about shopping. <laughs> every time I turn around, I'm finding a fully verbal kid that has never bought anything in a store, never ordered food in the restaurant. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Definitely. No, I, in fact, now that you've said that, I, I do remember letting her go to the counter by herself and buying things and getting the change. Well, you need to, get, you know, she needs to be doing that. Like next time you go to a gas station. Definitely. And you can pick out one where you can even pick out the pump. I'm now thinking of the gas stations where I go, which pump I'd go at because it's so I could see into the shop. Sure. Putting the gas in the car and give her some money and have her run in the shop and get something. It's perfect. It's, yeah, it's and you're so right easy. There. Yeah. If you're right there and you start with those baby steps and things like learning to drive. Learning to drive is going to take a whole lot longer yeah, because definitely. of the multitasking issue. Mm. I did 200 miles on dirt roads 
<laughs> you yeah. had a little more freedom well, to learn, huh? Well, let's start out in big parking lots, about yeah. 20 minutes a day. Keep the lessons at 20 minutes a day. You might have to do parking lots for a month and then very carefully find some back roads yeah. and do it in very, very safe places and very gradually go into traffic. Uh, but learning to drive was, was really, I could not have done livestock as a career if I had not learned to drive. It's just yeah. that simple. Definitely. And, oh and, 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 you, and, and the mom's scared. And I go, wait a minute. I'm talking about the middle of a dry field. Yeah. Nothing to hit. The cattle <laughs> there, they'll get out of the way. Um, they, they, um, the middle of a giant parking lot and find one that has no lamp posts to hit. Yeah, right. There's nothing to hit. Yeah. What, what are you afraid of? Yeah. Definitely. That's where you start. I love that. I love and that. Driver's ed often pushes them into it way too fast. Mm -hmm. Don't get into that trap. Yeah. Just spend a little bit of extra time. Like you said, extra tutoring, extra time, more practice, the better skills. Well, we can things set. like the, the shopping stuff. Um, you know, then you gradually uh, you know, do the gas station thing a few times. And then when we're at a restaurant, he's gonna, she needs to order herself from the menu. Mm -hmm. I was taught that you look at the the prices and if your host orders a hamburger you don't order steak yeah <laughs> i, no lobster I tail. learned that at a very young age yeah you see this is where social skills were taught in a much more rigid way Agreed. the autistic kid needs this because teaching the autistic kid social skills is like teaching somebody social skills in a foreign country yes everything has to be explained mm. That's so good. And it's really important that we take the time to explain it to our children, even, you know, the parents that think, oh, I don't think, you know, Joe could understand this concept. Well, well it's, it's not a concept. Fair. <laughs> All right, let's yeah. get back to our dinner table in the 50s. Okay, let's say I reached across the table and grabbed the serving dish of the mashed potatoes. And I said, we had these China blue and white China serving dishes. They were really pretty. And I reach across and mother didn't scream no. She didn't never scream no. She'd say, ask your sister to pass it. Mm -hmm. She'd give the instruction. This is not difficult. Yes. And I had to learn turn taking in games. This is another thing I had to learn. Yes. But I call this teachable moments. Um, okay, let's say I started picking up on um, mashed potatoes with my hands. That's totally disgusting. <laughs> and say, use the fork. Mm. Give the instruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and and lots of times I've gotten kids to do stuff. Um, there was one boy, this was a fancy um catered meal. And uh, this teenager comes in fully verbal, and mother brings in chicken takeout, which he proceeded to eat in the most disgusting manner possible. Uh. And you know what I said? This is a fancy dinner use utensils and the next time you eat some of the food that's here and he did mm. he did yeah i remember the meal perfectly it was real bland it was roast beef green beans mashed potatoes all the dressings on the side no gunky stuff all over everything a uh, salad with two dressings on the side and chocolate cake that was the meal oh. and he did Mom yeah. turned green because we were at a dinner. <laughs> but there's a point where, yeah, it was rude mm. of me to do this. Mm. But a year later, she's going to thank me. Yeah. And I've had moms come up to me. I got there, another mom, I got her 11-year-old using the men's room. Oh. She was taking her fully verbal 11-year-old into the ladies' room. I said, I'm going to do something about this. And we were at a restaurant. And I found out about this fully verbal kid. And I just casually during the meal say, you know, boys don't talk in the in bathrooms. So girls talk in bathrooms. Boys, you go away from the other guy. You look at the wall. You do your business. You leave. And then at the end of the meal, I just casually said, time to use the men's room. He got up, used it. And you know what? He's been using it ever since. That was expectations, right? When we give our kids the, that expectation, like you said, just give them that instruction, the, guide them. Oh, I take, gave them the rules. But also, then you have to worry about sensory overload can be a problem. Yeah. And you can get in some very noisy environments that they just can't tolerate. But the problem is, if you wear a headphone like what you've got on all the time, their ears will get more sensitive. Sure. I, I, them off I like what you say about um, having them 
press a button or honk a horn on their own or going and engaging in those um, fear when, when they're afraid of something, kind of facing it and engaging in it instead. But when they control it, yes. they control that horn, they may be able to learn to tolerate it. Mm -hmm. When they control it, this is very, very important. Yeah. When they control it. But then there's other situations like a really chaotic football game or something like that, or a crazy store at Christmas time. A uh, lot of multitasking, that would be not a good job. Chaotic store at Christmas time, that will not yeah. work. Yeah, definitely. And and the sensory problems are real. Yeah. What do you, do you have any, now that you are an adult, do you still have some sensory things that you deal with? Well, I still have some problems like finding pants that don't itch, especially if it's <laughs> on long flights. Yeah. Um, finding pants that don't itch. And, <sighs> and then I find a brand I like, and then they change suppliers Ooh. and then they itch. I've had that happen. Yeah. I hate that. <laughs> I hate that too. And um, I, the noise sensitivity, I, I do flinch more than most people do, but I can yeah. tell it right now. When I was a little girl in the early 70s, they, my garbage truck would come around that neighborhood and I would run into my room and cover my head with my pillow. And I have what's called uh, microtia, outer ear microtia, little teeny tiny ears. Mm. And so, you know, I didn't know that it wasn't sensory, oh, it wasn't, you know, a sensory issue until I was an adult and then thought, oh my gosh, okay, wait, I'm learning more about the sensory issue. That sounds a lot like when I was little, I had to run away from the trash man, you know, from the garbage truck coming down the road. It's yeah, so interesting. And they, they, um... You know, then, but then finally get older, you get more used to it. Yeah. But if a kid wears headphones all the time for noise sensitivity, the ear will get more sensitive and worse. So what you want to do is have them off most of the time, but give them control. You can have yeah. them with you. You can have them with you all the time. Yeah. And try not to wear them. And then there's a few like horrible that. places like this particular garbage truck. Then you put them on for that. Yeah, and then when definitely. the garbage truck is gone, you take them off. Yeah, that's really great advice. I just love that. I'm so thankful that I could come to your kitchen and hang out with you this morning. Thank you so, so okay, much. Okay, well, it's been Temple. good to talk to you. I'm hope I'm giving you some tips that are going to help out some of your families. I do too. I know you have. And um, our, I know that the love from all of my families goes to you. So thank you so, so much for what you do for the, the world and the community, the autism community. And um, we honor you and love you. And thank you so, so much. Well, it's great to um, leave the meeting now. And thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Bye. Okay, goodbye.